Men's Oberans and Love Magic, a formidable practice, usually only reserved for pleasing the most insatiable matriarchs in the City of Spiders. And is that your partner with you? What a gorgeous couple. Perhaps we could come to an agreement. <laughs> Darling, we are not fooling anyone. Unless you pay me to make a fool of you. You'll just have to see what is in store. Well, there are two of us, aren't there? Use your imagination. There's an idea. If you're comfortable sharing, so am I. Perhaps you'd care for a little extra company. I won't pretend the thought hasn't crossed my mind once or twice. Or more than that. Oh, I suspect we shall be more than merry. Charming. There must be a sprinkling shower of gold first. <laughs> Coin. Let's go. This is thrilling. I hope you're not afraid of the dark, my darling. I must snuff out the lights before we begin. It's all part of the experience. The room is bathed in total darkness, so there is nothing to distract from your ecstasy. The lady, Nim, moves your hand to where the clasps of her blouse lie. You know, I had a dream just like this once. A pleasant one, I hope. You were in it, so it was certainly lively. I'm surprised you needed the two of us for this to happen, but I am so glad it has. Oh, Imperian High Priestess, let us worship at your altar. The drow siblings fall to their knees in mock prayer towards Shadowheart, lavishing caresses over her thighs. My, and to think some shun organized religion. I could get used to this. To watch a woman flush with pleasure is one of nature's sweetest gifts. <sighs> Though perhaps you will prove even sweeter, Shadowheart. The night skips on, filled with fantasies Shadowheart seemed all too primed to suggest. <sighs> Give me a moment for pity's sake. You've exhausted me already. We recover quickly, but not that quickly. The bracing. <laughs> Takes me back to some youthful misadventures in the Underdark. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I was a foolhardy young druid, intent on seeing the beauty of nature's unworldly fauna and subterranean glow for myself. Certain events transpired, and I found myself a guest of a noble drow house for a time. Well, something between guest, prisoner, and consort, perhaps. A very likely outcome. In fact, I saw decorations of that very type, and worse, in my time there. But my luck held. The house matron took an interest in me, and the patron also. They saw me as a novelty, perhaps. I was chained in their bedchamber for nigh on three years. 
It was not ideal, but not without its positives either. I did what was necessary to survive, and perhaps a few things that were less than necessary. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. I feared for my life and wanted my freedom back, but I was willing to wait for my moment. And eventually it came. Loth's noble houses are constantly at each other's throats. And eventually, some rivals of my hosts sought to unseat them. It was chaos, drow against drow, the clash of blades echoing throughout caverns, the feel of warm blood that I could not see. I took my chance and fled while all were distracted. I never looked back until I breathed fresh air again. And never learned what came of my hosts. <laughs>